Hello, and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 1B. This tutorial will focus on accounting for long-term, non-interest-bearing notes payable. This tutorial has but one basic learning objective, and that is to review accounting for long-term, non-interest-bearing notes payable, and long-term meaning greater than one year. This tutorial continues with the example that was used in tutorial 1A, so we will follow the uh, Olson Developments or ODI example. This tutorial continues now with requirements 2 of that problem. In this case, we're going to assume now that the note payable is non-interest bearing for two years, but we are giving you a very important piece of information here that ODI's alternative borrowing rate is 6%. We're going to need this 6% basically to um, determine the implicit opportunity cost. So we will now prepare the journal entries to record the purchase, the year-end adjusting entries, and the final settlement of the note. And in this case, ODI's year-end is December 31st. Here's an important note as it pertains to present value of money. Once we go beyond one year, we will have to use time value of money calculations. And so since the interest rate on our note is 0%, we have to compare that to an implicit rate or market rate. And that's where this incremental borrowing rate or alternative borrowing rate comes in. Because the interest rate on the note is less than the 6% alternative borrowing rate, this note is offered to ODI at a discount. Now we'll, uh, we will begin with the journal entries. So again, non-interest bearing, 6% implicit rate with a December 31st year end. On the date of purchase, June 1st, 2020, we will debit the land, but this time for a different amount. In the first case, when we had a short-term note, we did not have to worry about the present value of money. This time we do. We're going to credit cash for the $1,000 down payment. We're going to credit the note payable for the present value of the note of $26,700, calculated as, if you use a typical financial calculator, these are the common keystrokes two periods, six IYZ interest rate, zero payment, and $30,000 future value. If we compute the present value, we get $26,700. The debit to the land is a combination of the sum of the present value of the note plus the cash down payment. So the debit is $27,700. And what I'm starting over here is a T account for the balance of the note payable. We start with $26,700 representing the present value of the note. Our next journal entry will be at the intervening year end of December 31st. We're going to have to accrue interest on the note, so we will calculate the interest accrual as follows. We have a $26,700 beginning balance of the present value of the note. We multiply that by the 6% interest that was used to discount the note, and we multiply by 7 over 12 months, because the time period inclusive from June to the end of December is 7 months, not 6 months. A lot of students make that mistake. It's actually seven months inclusive. So that is $934. So debit interest expense and credit the note payable of $934. And you can see that as we continue to build out this T account, we have an addition which represents the $934 as part of the amortization of the discount. The amortization of the discount is the calculated interest at the effective rate minus any cash interest paid. But remember, this is a non interest bearing note. So in this case, the entire amount of the interest expense is also the full amount of the, the amortized discount. At the end of 2020, the value of the note has now built up to 27,634. Now we fast forward one more full year to December 31st, 2021 instead of 2020. We have a debit to interest expense and a credit to note payable, but now we have a new value. Notice that the interest expense is not going to be the same as the 934. It's different because of compounding. We had calculated our ending balance after the first amortization of the 2020 discount. So our 27,634 becomes our starting point in the interest calculation times 6%, and this time times a full year. The interest expense and the portion of the discount amortized is $1,658. So that's carried into our account here, as well as the debit to interest expense. So when we add the next period's amortization of the discount, we end up at the end of 2018 with a balance in the note payable of $29,292. 
Next is going to be the final interest accrual before the settlement of the note. Remember that this is a two-year note starting on June 1st, 2020. That means the note matures on May 31st, 2022. We are going to record our interest expense and note payable the same as we have before. It's going to be $732 this time based on a new calculation, or $29,292 ending balance in the note payable account, times a 6% interest, but this time times 5 out of 12 months. And if you recall the first interest accrual, this one here was based on 7 out of 12 months. When we take the 7 and the 5 here, we've accounted for a full 12 months on either side of the intervening year end. The other piece of the interest, $732, we will add this as the discount amortization for 2022 and end up with a new ending balance prior to settlement of the note of 30024 Now, this is not exactly 30000 and that's due to rounding. Then the final entry on May 31st will be to settle the note. So we're going to debit the note payable for the balance that's in that account, so $30,024, again due to rounding. The amount of cash that's supposed to be paid is $30,000, and we'll just take the $24 uh, rounding error and credit that back to interest expense. So over the period of the two years of the note, the interest is perfect and the $24 is simply an immaterial rounding adjustment, leaving us with an ending balance after the note's been settled of zero, and we are done. Now we will conclude with some key points to remember. First, remember that any note payable longer than one year must be recorded at its present value. Non-interest bearing notes are still discounted at the borrower's implicit or alternative borrowing rate, and that represents the opportunity cost of obtaining an interest bearing loan. So in, in the case of a non-interest bearing loan, you'll usually see some interest rate provided, and that's the rate that you're going to use to discount the note to present value. Next, in situations on notes where the stated face of interest is less than the market or implicit rate, those notes will be offered at a discount. Of course, conversely, if the stated or face rate of interest is more than the implicit rate, then we'll have something that's offered at a premium. Zero interest notes are effectively always offered at a discount, with the effective interest rate calculation also being the discount amortization, again, because no cash interest is paid. And finally, accounting for non-interest bearing a long-term notes is the same under both ASPE and IFRS. There is a minor exception in the case of ASPE. That standard allows for either using the straight line method or the effective interest rate method of amortizing any discounts or premium. This problem was based on using the effective interest rate approach, which is what is typically more commonly followed. So this concludes tutorial 1B on long-term non-interest bearing notes. And we suggest now that you proceed to tutorial 1C to review accounting for long-term interest bearing notes.